As you learn your apex, it's important to have test gardens and do some testing with targets to understand target ID. And some of the challenging things you can encounter would be like iron masking, where you get into a site with lots of iron out there. That can change when good targets are laying amongst iron. So with the apex, you have five different target tones. We've got a couple targets here. We'll listen to that so we understand the tone breaks on targets and how that's gonna be affected when iron starts to mask a good target. Okay, so as we talk about iron masking, I've got a couple targets here so we understand the tone range of the apex. This first target here is an iron nail. And scanning it in this direction, I'm getting a low tone. It's reading 32, 33. The low tone on the apex is going to be anything reading from 0 to 34. So there's your low tone. Now as I step off and come to this next target, it's a piece of foil. It's reading 40, 41, 42 for the most part. That's the second tone on the apex range. So listen to that. The low medium tone or second tone versus the first tone, the iron grunt of iron targets. The medium tone here, the second tone in the range, goes from 35 to 44. So understanding the difference between these two tones is going to be important as we move forward with a few other tests here. As you get out to hunt with your apex, it's important to understand target identity and how iron masking can come into play with targets. The apex is excellent on target separation, has great recovery speed, but iron can affect the identity of certain targets. So let me do a couple of examples here for you. Okay, so as we get started, let me just show you real quick what we got on the settings. I'm just gonna keep it in zero discrimination mode, which means all pixels are in play. And I'm gonna stick with just factory sensitivity. I've got the volume at eight. I've got the iron volume reduced to three, so it's not so annoyingly loud. And we'll run in multi-frequency. So let's go through a couple of different scenarios to show you the effects of iron masking. First off, I've got a silver dime. I'm going to put that on the ground right here. We'll scan over it and listen to it. Nice high pitch sound. And if you look over here on the target ID, pretty steady, consistent 82, which is about where I expect a silver dime to be. Now, I'm going to take this nail, this iron nail, and I'm going to lay it down right on top of that. So there is a nice silver coin and a bed of iron directly underneath that nail. Now you go over, I'm still getting a pretty good high signal, but if you note the target ID is a little bit diminished. I see anywhere from 71 up into the higher 70s, but still a good signal. So the apex is able to overcome that iron that's there because it's not a significantly large chunk of iron, but that coin's right underneath it. So here's a second scenario showing target masking. In this case, I'm going to take a nickel, a little bit uh, lower conductivity. We'll scan over that. 52, 53, if you want to look at that on the ID. Low 50s on that. So now let's take a bigger chunk of nail. Here's a big, thick iron nail. I'm going to put that down there with my coin. Actually, let's scan the nail real quick by itself so you can hear that. Iron is low, but it is reading in the high 20s, 28. 29, 30. We'll look at that on the screen. Maybe as high as the low 30s, occasionally hitting down into the uh, higher 20s. So now let's put our nickel back down there and let's just cover these dudes up. Let's put the nail right there with the nickel and let's look at the combined conductivity when you have a larger piece of iron coming into play. My combined conductivity of the two is now in the high 30s. With the nail alone, it was high 20s, low 30s. The nickel was in the low 50s. So what's important to note is the combined conductivity when you're hunting in a patch of iron. I'm not hearing just an iron tone. I'm hearing something just above the iron. So if I've identified where the iron's hitting, I want to listen for stuff just above that. That shows you the smearing or the masking effect 
that a coin can have to its identity when it's embedded in iron like that. Another iron masking test, one I've seen some people do even recently. We've got three nails in a row right here. So what I'll do is I'll go over and scan this and I'll show you real quick on the machine. I've still got it in factory sensitivity. I've still got it in factory sensitivity zero mode. I've got uh, volume all the way up, iron volume all the way up, and I'm in multi-frequency. So let me step back here and scan over these targets real quick. Again, three iron nails in close proximity. <clears throat> My readings are 32, 33. You can come look at the reading on this real quick. They're all comparable size, just nails I've dug, all reading in the 30s. And so what I've seen people do, checking reactivity and how things work in the iron, is uh, I've seen them lay out a few targets, and uh, one of them I saw they put a, a dime out there, so here's a silver dime, I'll put it in a couple fingers. I think the guy did his about an inch and a half, so that's inch and a half or even less off that. Uh, here's our uh, Indian head penny, put that in there, it's a couple fingers away from each of those iron nails. And here's that buffalo nickel. There's a nail right there on that end. I'll move this even a little bit closer. There's that there. So let's go back through and listen to this again. Now what you would expect on the target ID on this, you know, people that dig dimes know they're gonna be low 80s. You're gonna have an Indian head that's gonna be in the high 70s and you've got a nickel that's gonna be in the low 50s. The effective conductivity is gonna be different because of the masking of the iron that's going on here. So what you're listening for is targets above the iron tone. Again, iron tone on this is gonna be zero to 34. So I'm gonna go through it with full iron volume and regular volume just so you can hear it. So let's go over them real quick. There's that dime. In this case, the effective conductivity with the iron beside it is making it read down closer to 50. There's your nail right there. Here's my Indian head. It's not in the 70s but it's well up into the 40s above the iron. Here's that nail gear again there. Here's our buffalo nickel. High 30s right at 40 and the iron right beside it. So let's go back over this. I'll reduce the iron volume. So we heard the iron on that. Keep the regular volume high so you can see it. And what I would do if I was hunting here is I would reduce my iron volume. I'll go to four, three, whatever. I'm gonna still hear the iron, but I'm listening for stuff better than the iron. So this is the test on this. You're not going to hear a high tone. The masking is going to obscure that high tone of its true identity. It's going to bring the identity down, but you're listening for something above the iron range. There's our dime. Doesn't give you a silver target indication, but it tells me that there's something good amongst the iron. There's the iron right beside it. Let's move over. There's my Indian head penny. It's not 77 anymore, but it's well above the target range of what I was hearing for that nail in the 40s. And we get over here to the nickel, 38, 39. And just the iron itself, I'm in the 30s. So it's close to that, but it's something that's jumped up four or five, six points above that. A bigger conductor like that uh, penny is jumping up into the 40s. The dime is jumping up closer to 50 in certain cases here. So you're listening for stuff like that that's above where the iron is. That's the trick to hunting in the iron, understanding target identity and masking of those kind of blended or smeared target IDs. Okay, we just did this test kind of like I've seen others doing this online. And uh, just gonna show you again on the target ID, I'm gonna move these targets closer to each other haven't changed my settings. I'm still in multi-frequency. Um, I'm just gonna kind of squeeze everything in. I'm gonna put the uh, nails pretty much almost touching the coin. You know, the other person was doing some of these inch and a half apart. I've got them, you know, almost tail to tail, just in that same line like that. Um, silver dime, Indian head, and then the nickel. And again, what you're gonna listen for is just something above the iron tone range when you're digging in all kind of trashy iron like this. So let's go back over them. As I go through, I can hear some stuff popping out of there. We've showed you a few different uh, techniques, a few different options here with the iron masking and what's going on with uh, some of the target ID. And what's important to note on some of these, this is a five tone machine with the apex. So when you go above the iron tone, that next tone up, 
Other machines that only have three tones, it's gonna to be more distinctive that it sounds like a better tone. You're listening for something just above iron when you've got extreme masking going on. So that's an important note on some of these tests with the Apex being a five-tone machine. So that's just a quick overview on target ID and how iron masking comes into play. Something you should understand if you're getting in to hunt old house sites and places that are really littered with iron. Be sure to check out all other videos in the Apex training series.